Hello to all my viewers. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta. And today I will explain the concept of model building in structural equation modeling. There are six stages of structural equation modeling. The first stage one is defining the individual constructs. That is what items we will use uh, as a measured variable. Organizational commitment is a construct which I am capturing with the help of four statements OC1 to OC4. Job satisfaction. Four statements, JS1 to JS4, environmental perception, EP1 to EP4, behavior of the co-workers, AC1 to AC4, and staying intention of an employee, SI1 to SI4. After identifying the statements, also known as indicators for the construct, we will develop the measurement model. You can see the measurement model on your right hand side. Here, we are co-varying all the constructs with each other. The next stage is designing a study to produce the empirical result. Basically, in this stage, we are screening the data, which means that we are testing the data for the missing observation, for outliers and the multivariate normality. After clearing stage three, we are assessing the measurement model validity. So we are testing the reliability and the validity of the model. Here, we are also considering the goodness of fit. If the measurement model is valid, then we will proceed for the structural model, that is stage 5 and stage 6. And if the measurement model is not valid, this model is not valid, we will refine the measures and design a new study. Now this more measurement model, we will convert it into the structural model, which you can see on your right hand side. So now there are linkages, that is environmental perception affecting the job satisfaction. So now we are having a cause and effect relationship. In previous case, in measurement model, we never use a cause and effect relationship. We only co-vary the constructs. But in case of structural model, we, we define the relationship. That is one is independent and another is a dependent. Then we assess the structural model validity with the help of goodness of fit the significance, the direction and the strides of the structural parameter estimates. Is the structural model valid? Yes. Draw the substantive conclusions and recommendations. And if they are not valid, refine the model and test with the new data. Now there is a difference between confirmatory factor analysis and the exploratory factor analysis. Confirmatory factor analysis is primarily used to confirm or validate pre-existing theory. So when we start this study, we are very clear that these items will be loaded on factor A, that is item 1 to item 4 will be loaded on factor A, item 5, 6, 7 will be loaded on factor B. Research, researchers specify a hypothesized factor structure and test it against the observed data. In case of exploratory factor analysis, we are not sure that which items will be loaded on which factor. So EFA is used to explore and uncover the underlying factor structure of a set of observed variables without any preconceived hypothesis. It helps in generating hypothesis and understanding the relationship between the variables. What is the difference between measurement model and the structural model? The measurement model specifies the relationship between the latent variable, MSC is a latent variable, and their corresponding observed indicators. So these are the corresponding observed indicators often represented as by the regression path, also known as a factor loading. These are known as factor loadings, also known as a outer loading, which indicate how strongly each observed variable is associated with its latent variable. And these are the error terms. We have already discussed this thing in my previous video. I'll request all my viewers to kindly refer my previous video to understand the flow of this lecture series. Now let's talk about the structural model. So when I'm specifying the relationship between construct to construct and this is the residual error of the model. So this is known as a structural model. The structural model is usually depicted graphically using the path diagrams, which illustrate the relationship between the latent variables and their indicators. So this is a relationship between the latent variables. The path coefficients associated with each path indicate the strength and direction of the relationship. There are some terminology which you will have to remember x1, x2, x3, x4 and x5 are the measured variable. In the measurement model, commonly notation used are uh, Latin factors, x is a measured variable, lambda is a factor loading, 
delta is an error term this is an error term and phi is for the correlation the covariance you can see the covariance this one we are covariating two constructs covariance covariance measures the extent to which two variables vary together or covary covariating construct is useful when you want to account for the potential interdependent interdependencies or shared variance between constructs without assuming a specific causal direction so there is no cause and effect here the sign of the covariance indicates the direction of the relationship a positive covariance suggests that the variables tend to increase or decrease together that is they have a positive linear relationship while a negative covariance indicates an inverse relationship that is one variable increases the other tends to decrease example job satisfaction and lo loyalty co-vary with each other running regression between two constructs the blue line running a regression between two constructs in sam involves specifying a direction or a causal relationship between them in this case you would typically have a dimensional arrow pointing from one construct to another in the sam model indicating that one construct is influencing or predicting the an another the regression coefficient estimated in the sam analysis represents the strength and direction of the relationship between the constructs Running a regression allows you to test, specify hypotheses about the effects of one construct on another. Example, increase in study hour increases the academic performance. Path is only present in the structural model. What is the difference between covariance and the regression? Covariance two constructs in SAM examines the correlation between them without assuming a specific cause and effect relationship. While running a regression between two constructs, construct test a directional relationship where one construct is considered a predictor or a causal for the other. To account for unmeasured covariance, we draw the double-headed arrows between all independent variables. Measured error. So this is the error which is on the measured variable, also known as statements or indicators. Measured error typically refers to the discrepancy between the observed or the measured variable and the true values of the variable. It represents the inherent variability or no noise in the data. In other words, it quantifies the extent to which the measured values deviate from the ideal or the expected values. Measured error can arise due to various factors such as measurement inaccuracy, random fluctuations or uncontrolled variables affecting the measurement. Measurement error accounts for unique variance which remains unexplained by the factor level. That is, we are assigning E1, E2, E3. For example, if we say that this is statement 1, so S1 is able to explain the variance of F1 by 74%. Remaining remains unexplained, which is an error. So that will be, that uh, remaining component is now E3. Now, what is a residual error? So, when we insert an error term, when we are running a path from construct to construct, this is known as a residual error. Measured error is on the statements. Residual error is on the construct. Residual error is specifically used in the context of statistical modeling and regression analysis. It refers to the difference between the observed values and the predicted values obtained from a regression model. In other words, the residual error represents the unexplained or leftover variance in the data that the model was unable to capture. It is calculated by subtracting the predicted value from the observed value for, for each data point. The residual error is a useful quantity for assessing the goodness of fit of a regression model as, indi as it indicates how well the model can account for the observed data. So E7 is a residual error. So this is how you can build the model in uh, SPSS AMOS. For more videos on SPSS AMOS, you can refer my playlist in which I already uploaded many videos. Please don't forget to subscribe my channel and press the like button. You can also follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter.